Hello, this is Professor Gahn from Colorado State University in Pueblo, and welcome back to History 101 World Civilizations to 1100. Today we begin Unit 3, Government and the Articulation of Political Power. We'll spend about the rest, uh, a full month of the semester on uh, Unit 3. The primary source documents we'll be looking at for this unit are all concerned with political power. Sometimes these documents were written by the people who actually wielded the power. Uh, in today's example, we have Darius I, the emperor of the Persian Empire, the Achaemenid Persian Empire. We have his Behistun inscription that we'll be working with. And sometimes, the documents are written by other people. That's a good thing to pay attention to. Who's the author of the document? So our concern over the next month is how various rulers in various places articulated their power and what that can tell us about those civilizations and their attitudes towards rule. So obviously uh, the majority of this unit will focus on political activity. But religion and society are never very far from politics, and when it comes to articulating power, religion is often a big part of it. So we'll also keep in mind our other two main themes of the semester, uh, and in two different ways. In one way, that is how society and politics interact, how religion and politics interact, but uh, also when just when we get clues about the nature of society from these primary sources even though the sources themselves are dedicated to questions of political power and government we are ready now to start with the first civilization we'll be dealing with the Achaemenid Persian Empire which lasts from 539 to 331 BCE we talk about the Achaemenid Persian Empire and not just the Persian Empire on its own because we'll be talking about a different Persian Empire a little bit later in the semester. So this Persian Empire is named after the family of the Achaemenids. So that's why it gets its name. So you just want to be able to differentiate between this early Persian Empire and the later Persian Empire. This early Persian Empire, the Achaemenid Empire, is from 539 to 331. The images here are of the document that we'll be working with, Darius's Behistun inscription. Uh, and these images come from the Livius.org site where we also get access to the inscription. You may actually want to pause the video and go get a hold of the inscription. Uh, there's a link in the Persia folder uh, to the inscription on the web links page on Blackboard. And at the bottom of the first page, so the link is to the introductory page, at the bottom of that page you will see a link to the first page of the translation. It'll say translation, click on it, it'll give you the first page of the translation, and then at the bottom of the first page of the translation, where it says 2 part 2, uh, you can click on that and get to the second page of the translation. I would like you to print out those two pages and bring them to class with you. The the thing I usually do is put the documents into a Word document so that I can print a lot less and save some paper and save some trees and save some money. But um, it's up to you how you want to print that out, but I would like you to have it with you in class so that we can work with it. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the context for Darius's Behistun inscription. And in order to do that, I'm actually going to go back kind of far in history because I want to show you the context, but I also I want to show you the relative size of the Persian Empire, which is actually quite impressive compared to previous empires. So let's go back a little bit chronologically to some of the empires we've already looked at. There's the Akkadian Empire. You remember the Akkadian Empire is the first empire uh, in the world, and Sargon is the first emperor in the world. Uh, you should know Sargon not only for his own deeds of creating the first empire, but also through the writings of his daughter, Enheduanna, who wrote to the Nin Mesara, the Lady of Countless Cosmic Powers. So you should be able to connect that. Notice the size of the Akkadian Empire is this um, darkened out purple area in, in fact, Mesopotamia. 
The Akkadian Empire lasted about three generations, although the dynasty goes on a little bit, but not so much as an empire. And there's pretty much chaos that ensues. Uh, especially in Sumeria, we have independent city kingdoms, as we had before the creation of the Akkadian Empire. The next great empire that comes into being in Mesopotamia is also an empire that we have met before. Uh, this is the Old Babylonian Empire. Uh, the Old Babylonian Empire also is uh, connected with Hammurabi, and of course we read Hammurabi's law code, so you're familiar with this empire. And uh, you can see here in the red the territory that Hammurabi's empire consisted of. The Babylonians had a um, contentious relationship with one of their neighbors from the territory of Ashur. These are the Assyrians. Uh, and so power went back and forth between the Assyrians and the Babylonians over quite a long span of time. And so uh, after the Old Babylonian Empire, we have the rise of the Assyrian Empire. The Assyrian Empire actually goes through uh, many various incarnations. So we have the Old Assyrian Empire, the Middle Assyrian Empire, and the New Assyrian Empire. The New Assyrian Empire, or the Neo-Assyrian Empire, is the empire um, that uh, was when the empire was at its greatest extent. So this is as big as the Assyrians ever got, and it's not unimpressive. It's all of Mesopotamia, uh, plus into Iran, into Turkey, uh, south along the Levant, and into Egypt. So for a little while, the Neo-Assyrians controlled a great deal of territory. The Neo-Assyrians are followed again by Babylonians. As I say, power kind of went back and forth between them. So the Neo-Babylonian Empire uh, replaces the Neo-Assyrian Empire. We don't need to know dates for all of these, but uh, let me just say briefly that the Neo-Assyrian Empire is roughly from 934 BCE to 609 BCE, and the Neo-Babylonian Empire is from 626 BCE to 539 BCE. The cause of the destruction of the Neo-Babylonian Empire was actually from a force outside of Mesopotamia proper. So far, all of the empires we've been talking about have been empires that originated within the confines of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, even if they have extended their territory beyond. In other words, the center for these early empires has all been Iraq, and the capitals have all been uh, in Iraq or in Mesopotamia, modern Iraq. This is not true of the Persian Empire. The Persian Empire originates in Iran. Okay, So Iran is a little bit to the east of Iraq, so this territory here. And the Persian Empire originates with uh, Cyrus the Second or Cyrus the Great, whose reign lasts from 559 to 530. You notice those dates are slightly different from when we date the Achaemenid Persian Empire, because the Achaemenid Persian Empire itself, uh, I mean, Cyrus doesn't actually create an empire till a couple decades after he is monarch in Iran, modern Iran, or ancient Persia. So, Cyrus is the great. Now that's a great clue in history. When you call somebody the great, it means they beat up a lot of people and took a lot of land. And you can see from this image that Cyrus's empire far exceeds in terms of space, in terms of land that is conquered, any of the previous empires that originated in uh, Mesopotamia. So Cyrus starts his campaign and gradually, uh, but remarkably swiftly, takes over much of what you see on the slide in purple. Uh, not quite all of it. Some of those acquisitions were by his successors. His first successor was Cambyses, and Cambyses is the one who uh, conquered Egypt. We're not that worried about Cambyses, except for this kind of one issue. Cambyses was allegedly uh, insane, or at least went insane. Now, we don't know for sure if that's true, but what we do know is that at Cambyses' death, the territory that 
uh, Cambyses, I mean, excuse me, the territory of the Persian Empire went into chaos and there were struggles for political power. And the victor in this conquest was Darius I. Darius I is the one who wrote the uh, inscription that we're reading today, the Behistun inscription, uh, because of its location in Behistun. Let me say a word or two about the Persian Empire before we turn to Darius himself and his inscription. First of all, uh, just in, in terms of its modern impact, Iran today still celebrates its birth with uh, Cyrus the Great's acquisition of power. So, uh, Iran, especially compared to those of us in the United States, has a very long history, or at least claims its history, uh, very far back. The other thing I want you to look at is the geography. So, in the western part of the empire, we go all the way into Egypt and Libya. So, uh, we recover the territories that we've already visited in the early river valley civilizations, that is the Nile River in Egypt, the Tigris and Euphrates rivers in Mesopotamia, and the Persian Empire, the Achaemenid Persian Empire, goes all the way east to the Indus and the Indus River Valley in India. So geographically, uh, we're covering all these places we've already talked about in the course. We're also coming into contact with places we will be talking about very soon. So the creation of the Persian Empire in the e East is going to have an impact on what happens in India and Pakistan, or what will be India and Pakistan. Uh, not only that, but if we look all the way to the West, the Persians actually might even be able to make this little area purple too if they wanted to in Greece because uh, for a couple of years at least, the, per the Achaemenid Persian Empire had control of uh, the territory, much of the territory of Greece, not quite all of it. So our book talks about a conflict between the Greeks and the Persians, and we'll be talking a little bit more about that and looking at some Greek sources and attitudes about government, and also be looking at some Indian sources about uh, government. So, um, this is the Persian Empire geographically, uh, at its greatest extent, or just about at its greatest extent. Let's consider Darius. So Darius, in, in the Behistun inscription, Darius's, um, one might argue, claim to legitimacy, uh, has in line six a list of places. You might want to take a look at this map and see how many places you can identify. It's not um, it's not crucial that you know the location of all of those places, but they're all here. The places he talks about fighting are all here within the Persian Empire. You'll also want to keep in mind, as you're working with the inscription, the political situation of Darius. Darius was not the son of Cambyses when he came to power. Uh, as I said, when Cambyses dies, uh, Cyrus's successor, when Cambyses dies, there's a lot of chaos in the empire and there are many people fighting to reunify uh, the territory, uh, each man under his own power. Darius ultimately is successful and so he becomes the um, honest, uh, legitimate ruler, but notice his sort of insistence on his legitimacy in the inscription. So speaking of the inscription, uh, you might want to at some point pause the video here so you can look over these questions because these are the questions we will be talking about when we come to class. So on what does Darius base his legitimacy? There are a lot of answers to that question, so how important is each of them? Which of Darius's activities are commemorated on this inscription? In other words, what does he talk about? And for that matter, what does he not talk about? So how can we determine what he thinks is important to say on the inscription? What might that mean? Who gets credit for his victories? Who might you expect to be credited that doesn't get any credit for doing any work? Darius talks about lies. What do you think that means? How long of a time period does the inscription cover? 
How important is it to Darius to have the edict published? Starting in line 60, Darius uses you. To whom do you think he's referring? And what is the location of the inscription? In what language was it written? Keep in mind that we're not just... Um, we don't just want to answer these questions, but we want to talk about what this means for how Darius, in the Achaemenid Persian Empire, talks about government and his position of power. What do you think the task of a ruler is? Do you get any hint from what Darius says? Or is this about something else? Also then, what other things do you notice? Are there connections to religion or society that you can bring in from what you read in the inscription? So keep all those things in mind. So we'll talk about the inscription uh, in our next class, uh, but I want to talk for a moment about the end of the Persian Empire. So uh, this is after Darius the I. The end of the Persian Empire comes about with the conquests of Alexander the Great, who comes from Macedon or Macedonia, what you see in pink up here. Alexander... Uh, comes to conquer the Persians, allegedly anyway, to get revenge for the Persians' fight against the Greeks that takes place earlier. So uh, the Persian Empire, one can argue, ends in 331 when Alexander uh, defeats Darius in battle and Darius runs away and hides and then he actually gets killed over here in Bactria or modern Afghanistan. Uh, we will also see the impact of Alexander's conquest and the kingdoms that get created out of that when we come back and talk a little bit about India and the rise of India. So that's it for this presentation. I look forward to talking with you about the Behistun inscription and then coming back and considering uh, what's happening in India.